Hello and welcome to Gillivan's Inside Out and this is the second series I'm going to do about trying to harmonize like Gil and in this series we're going to look at harmonizing the first A section of On the Sunny Side of the Street. In the first few videos I harmonized a ballad when I fall in love. Now on the sunny side of the street is a nice medium slow swing and it's going to present just a few more challenges than that one did. For starters we have more notes so it's going to be a little bit trickier to fit in some of the nice bass lines and chords that we did on the ballad. But let's give it a go anyway. So if you haven't seen the first few videos I recommend doing that but here are the rules just quickly recapped. Rule number one, ride the bass line first. Rule number two, the bass and the melody shouldn't be the same pitch. Rule number three, there's going to be three inner parts. Rule number four, don't repeat the same note in the same part in a row. Okay, let's get to it. So the first thing I like to do is just have a look at the tune, just look at its general range and characteristics, just see if I can spot any problems that might come up already. For instance, in this one I notice that the melody goes quite low in a couple of instances. So I'm just going to have to watch out with my chord if I want to get four voices under that, you know, where I'm going to place the bass note. So for instance, let's say I put an E here, it's going to be really hard to get all those voices in between the E and the C, it'll be a really crunchy chord. Whereas if I had this C down here, it would be a lot more simple, or another note. I'm generally going to harmonize this in a note for note fashion just for the purposes of this exercise but of course your bass line or accompanying chords don't have to be the same rhythm as the melody. I've kept the melody pretty simple here just again for the purposes of this exercise. So when I'm taking on a new harmonization I of course like to get to know it so I'll play the tune quite a bit on the piano and if I'm going to look for any substitutions or chord changes I would do it at that time. These options might come up as I do the harmonization, but sometimes it's just easier to decide on the big basic chords before beginning. So for instance, instead of the G7 and G sharp diminished, I really liked having a B minor and then a B flat 7. So here's what that sounds like. Here it is with the original G7 and G sharp diminished. And with the B half diminished and B flat 7. I just felt like it was a substitution I wanted to use, so I did. A lot of this is going to be personal taste. I think one of the reasons I like the B minor 7 flat 5 here is that it avoids me hitting this G7 too early. And if you remember in the past videos I talked about the macro structure, and I think that's me trying to avoid hitting the dominant too early before the end of the A section. It just delays that resolution a bit more. Okay, other than that, I'll go ahead and start looking at the target chords. Okay, I'll start with the most obvious ones. A C at the end is pretty obvious. A D on that note I think will sound good. And the G, I'll just put in the rest of that D there. And a phrase like this one, it can be tricky to think about where you might want the target chord. I think the D7 is obvious, but in terms of the A minor, where is that going to come? Is that going to come here at the C? Or later on, maybe it's going to be at this C, so we get a nice strong sort of 2-5 at the end of the phrase. I'm actually going to leave that for now, because I think of the D as being more important, and this way I don't lock myself into a certain solution. You get the same thing in this bar, where is the target chord? Where's the F gonna land? Is it on this C? Or is it on that D? Or one of these other two notes? It could pretty much be any one of these notes. For now I'm gonna choose this note, but again that could be moved, depending on what happens around it. All right, with my substitution, I pretty much guaranteed that I wanted these two notes. And let's look at the start. Right, at the start we've got a bit of a problem because the root note is the melody. So I could put the C here, but that will be breaking one of the rules, which is that the bass and the melody shouldn't be the same pitch. So I could use a substitution, something like an A minor, but actually I'm going to break one of my rules right away and just put a C here for now. 
and then I'll put in the B on the end of this bar, anticipating the B minus 7 flat 5. So that's my basic target chords done. I'm going to go ahead and have a listen to that. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I'm seeing a little bit of a problem here with this repeated D. It's okay. I could try a substitution here. You know, maybe I have something like an A7 leading to this D minor. Or I could try an inversion of the chord. And I'll give that a go. What if I put the third on the bottom? Yep, that's good. I'll leave it like that for now. Just so this video doesn't get too long, I'm going to focus on the very beginning now, and I'll finish off the rest in later videos. Right, I'll just see what other notes I can fill in here. It's likely that I want this start to be a G7. Let's go ahead and put a G here. Now what of this D? Could do something like the leading note there. I might get into trouble with a few repeated notes. Could go for a chord 6. I think I'll come back to it. Okay, we've got a few notes to do here. Now this can be tricky because I've just got the chord C, but I've got three notes to harmonize here. I don't want to harmonize them all as C because otherwise there won't be any movement. I'm going to try some contrary motion. Contrary motion is always strong. What if I go down from this C? And I like that A there because that hints at A minus 7, a nice substitute for chord 1. That could work. Yep, yeah, good. And looking at the macro structure, I've got a repeated G here. Let's try that, hear what it sounds like. It's okay. I could try a G sharp. It's going to give me an interesting chord there. Or I could try an F. Yep, that sounded okay. Okay, as you can see, this first little bit's almost done. Just trying to think how I might improve it. I could try a B flat here. I did that in the ballad. It just introduces some chromaticism. It sort of hints at a B flat 7 going to the A minor. That's nice. And it also makes the note B the first B we hear. Okay, just one more note now. I could try an A there, but we have an A later, but that's okay. Here's what that sounds like. It's okay. Now you can hear here that you've got different options for the target chord. You might have made this a G and this a 2. It's got quite a good sound. The reason I like this G at the start is because it's a longer note. It's accented, it comes off the beat and it really cements the tonality. It's not always needed. Here's what it sounds like with a B. That could work. And as I showed in my previous videos, I usually try lots of different ways to harmonize it. Again, I've done this before, and I did lots of different versions on paper first. I'm going to leave it like that for now and see how our harmonization comes up. So it's time to add three inner parts. I've just got to remember to add three distinct pitches and not to repeat the same note in the same part in a row. I'll go ahead and do my target chords first. B half diminished, I'm going to need my 7th, and a 3rd, and that leaves some room for the 5th. That looks good. Let's do the C. So I'm going to put a 6th in, a 5th, and a 3rd. So that means this chord only has 4 notes, whereas that one has 5 notes. And that's okay, I'm just going to go with that for now. I'm going to go ahead and do this A. Try a 3rd, ninth, and a minor 7th, and now this B flat 7. See, I don't want to put a ninth there because I'm going to be repeating the C. I'll put in my flat 7 first and a 5th. So I need another note. How about a flat ninth? That's good. I might spell it differently there. So we've got an F and A flat, a B and a D. So that's a B flat 7 flat 9. That just leaves this F. And I could just try a diatonic F major 9. 
Here's what that sounds like, I'll play it a bit slower. That all sounds pretty good. Because this tune is sort of bluesy, I might try this F major 9 as an F9, flat in that 7th. These are the sort of changes that are just mostly personal taste. But here's what that sounds like. Yeah, it's quite cool with the F9. I'll leave it like that for now. Okay, on to this pickup. Alright, here's my G13, I'm guessing of some sort. Let's add a seventh, oh, sorry, a third. And there's my seventh. Could try some sort of ninth. So I've got a nice G13 there. Okay, now for this chord. It looks like it's going to be some sort of B chord. Seventh, fifth. Got my third already. So what do I do? Could add an eleventh. But it's not a great solution. I've got my E repeated. I've got this A repeated. You can see it's hard to make this chord work. Which means I'm going to change the bass note. But I still want to make sure the bass is interesting. Let's try what it would be like with an A. So I could have some sort of A minor 11 chord. Put in the 3rd and the 7th. That would be the 5th. Again I've got repeated note. Repeated note. Okay so you can see this is chord is tricky. So... I'm going to try something different. What if I try a D flat 7 flat 9? There's my 7th, 3rd, 5th. Okay, from here to here I'm looking okay. B drops to the A, A flat to G, F to E, but I've got a repeated F here and a repeated B. I could try and revoice this G7. I could do that. That takes care of a couple of the notes. I've still got the F though. Well, I could try and miss the F out. What if it were an A? So that part would go A, F, E. Next one up. That would be B, A flat, G. The next one up. C sharp. B, A. Let's hear what that chord sounds like though. It's actually not too bad. Here's what it sounds like nice and slow. That's sort of cheeky. I'll leave it like that for now. That sounds pretty good. Here's what the melody and bass line sound like together. Just the bass line. Yeah, good. I'm liking that. And here's the example again, slowly. Good. I consider that pretty much done. Okay, I'm going to end this video here, and I'll continue on in the next installment. Thanks.